Hi guys, welcome back to another video on the channel that explores narcissistic abuse and recovery from it. And the reason I'm emphasizing narcissistic is because I don't always say that word right. And I was pulled up on it there recently. And look, it's a nuisance of a word, just like the narcissist. It's a bit of a, a tongue tire damn nuisance. <laughs> So if I don't say it right, I know you guys know what I mean. If I abbreviate it to the Irish version of narcissistic. So without further ado, there's one other thing I'd like to say, and that is thank you for the real generosity of people who have actually made donations of hard earned cash to the channel recently. What I'm using the donations for is kind of are th things like the intro music and the development of this course that's coming out at the end of October for healing, which I'm determined to make extremely affordable so that people that can't afford maybe one to one coaching can definitely afford this course because we need these kind of things out there when we when we start off on this, you know, this journey after a dreadful experience, we need every support and help we can get to make progress. Sorry about the noise effects as usual. Himself is in the background there waiting to go for a walk and actually sucking on his teddy's nose. That's what he does. He uses it as a comforter. If I can get him doing it, I'll turn the camera around so you can see him. That's Remy the dog for new subscribers that don't know who I'm talking about. Okay, guys, so, you know, a lot of the time when we come to this forum on YouTube, we are seeking answers as to whether or not, you know, what happened to us? Why did this person dump us with no explanation? Why did we think they were the love of our lives and they cheated and things seemed very odd throughout the relationship? And we feel really bad and we can't, you know, heal. We can't get over them like we would in other relationships when they end. And I'm speaking about the intimate relationship, the romantic kind of a relationship on this channel mostly. So we have this big looming question, you know, oh, I'm finding this information out. Was I actually with a narcissist? And I don't know about you guys, but I remember my personal experience finding out the information. Loads of things were clicking. And then I'd kind of back off from it a bit and say, no, you know, they're telling me not to go contact with this person and all these things, all this advice. And I wasn't ready to hear it. And I remember thinking, oh, all these people, you know, on YouTube, well, they were with narcissists, but I couldn't have been with a narcissist because I was really in love with him. And, you know, it was real. I mean, it couldn't not have been real. Of course, I, you know, came to the conclusion over time when I was ready to accept that I had been with a narcissist and did more study and healed more, I was able to accept it. But what I found very difficult was I needed clarification and I'm sure you guys are the same. I needed to know. It was so important to me because I didn't know what direction to go in. I needed to know if I had been with a narcissist. Now, even psychologists, trained psychologists, psychotherapists find it difficult to diagnose narcissism and NPD. Basically, they don't often get hold of narcissists to do it, but um, it is a difficult, um, it's a difficult clinical diagnosis and only somebody who's trained can actually diagnose it. But what we can do is see a pattern of behavior and identify the, if you, if you look at the DSM, the characteristics um, that I think you have to have five of the characteristics of the nine listed in the DSM Diagnostic Statistics Manual in relation to the Narcissistic Personality Disorder. So you can be fairly certain 
you know, once you do your study, once you look at the DSM, maybe if you go for coaching with someone like me or one of the other channels, or again, HG Tudor has a, an ARC detection um, consultation that he offers, you can be fairly sure after research, after looking at YouTube, after going to the DSM, after maybe getting a coaching session, that you were in fact with a narcissist. What I'd like to do today is to give you another insight or another tool that you may relate to or feel familiar with in order to help you reach that conclusion for people that maybe are at the beginning of the journey, aren't too sure, or just like to study and find out more so that they don't go back to being with a narcissist again in a new relationship. So we have a lot of different ways to diagnose if our ex-partner was a narcissist or not. What I'm going to suggest today is that we don't use logic, that we don't use emotion, that we go strip it really back to the beginning of when we were all running around um, in caves, back to the beginning of time when the human being went much, much more on instinct and gut feeling. So I'm going to talk about the gut brain today and go through the narcissistic narcissistic relationship um, from the point of view of the gut brain. So if we listened to our gut, we probably would have left the narcissistic relationship a lot earlier. We may not have gotten into it and we certainly would have not logically used our factual brain to knock down the feelings that we were getting in our gut, you know, to explain away the red flags that were rising from it within us. Our instincts told us at different times that things weren't as they should be, that this person was a bit off that things were odd. But often empathic people will use their logical brain to try and make excuses as to why someone should behave in a certain way and kind of forgive the oddity of another person's behaviour in a wholeful respect that everybody's different. And this can get us into trouble. So let's just take the narcissistic romantic relationship and initially we are bowled over with a feeling that's quite euphoric in that we feel that we've met our ideal partner and you know we know they rush us they rush us they the narcissist will want to move in with you nearly immediately they want a very intense connection with you because they want to gain total control of you and any other aspects in your life. They want to diminish and isolate you from. They're, they're a predator and you're the prey initially. And they want to get you out in the open where you have no protection, so to speak. Now, initially, you'll feel a bit hunted, actually. Initially, you'll feel a bit hunted. But because they fluff you up, because they validate you, because they agree with your principles and what you, you know, your ideals and things like that, you get lulled into a false sense of security. It's as if they're leaving a trail of food for you and you are the prey and you're eating this food and you're feeling very fulfilled and you feel like quite empowered. You feel like it's it's a wonderful feeling because you really do feel that after, say, all this time, you know, of going through life on my own, suddenly everything's right with the world and you enter a state of euphoric happiness. But it is, it's a bit drug-like. It's not real. It happens too quickly. Um, but sometimes it's, it's, it's addictive. It's quite hard to say no to. Even though you initially, your gut will tell you, Oh, this is a bit quick. Oh, he or she's a bit intense. Oh, they seem to need me an awful lot. They want me all the time. They want me to be with them all the time. They must think I'm amazing. Maybe I am amazing. 
So then you get to the stage where you feel very confident and you feel very happy. Although it's based not on solid foundations, the narcissistic individual notices this and feels like as you get more confident and empowered with the love bombing stage of the relationship, they begin to feel a loss of control of you because you're becoming more outgoing, you know, you're more fulfilled. They resent this because they kind of go, who do you think you are? Like, I have given you this. I have made you. I, I am responsible for you now being happy. So you needn't get carried away with yourself. You're my creation. I own you. They resent the fact that you're happier than they are because your happiness, you you know, is built on real, your real personality and your real ability to be happy. Whereas what they're showing you looking like they're happy with the relationship is fake. It's a controlled manipulation on their part. So they resent your happiness. They are uh, 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 about the fact that you're getting carried away with yourself because they are responsible for your happiness. Don't you forget it. That's the kind of thing that comes into their, their way of being when they start to devalue you and shake the ladder you're on to get you down a few rungs. Don't you think you can go up there on your own? If you go up the ladder, the narcissist says to themselves, I'll put you up at the top again, but you needn't think you're getting up there on your own. This is to do with me, not you. And the devaluation goes forward like that. So your gut is at that stage when you're in that the relationship, when you're you're having a great time initially, and then you start to get this torturous push and pull. Your gut is telling you that there's something not quite right at different stages, particularly when you're triangulated with other people. You're 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 not feeling at ease. You're feeling you're feeling anxious, your anxiety levels go up and then they drop when the narcissist decides they're going to whoosh you up the ladder a bit. Things go wrong, things go wrong in your work. Uh, you get, you have accidents, your health seems to suffer. Um, relationships break down with other people. You're in a state of confusion, but you're not, because it's so subtle and it's, it's brought in from different angles, you don't feel at ease. Your gut is telling you that this isn't right because you're always striving and striving and you become more dependent on the narcissist and more, more dependent on their validation that everything is going to be okay and that, you know, this, this okay phase is going to continue a little bit longer. But your gut, if you were to listen to it, is telling you that Anxiety has now replaced happiness and that that's not what a healthy relationship where you're truly happy and where the other person has your best interests at heart should feel like. You're also being more controlled in that you can't seem to do things on your own, that you have to, you feel a responsibility to rush home to the narcissist. You feel different to you. You don't feel yourself anymore. If you listened to your gut, you'd hear your gut telling you that this is not a good situation for you to be in. Then the narcissist has you under such control that they kind of get confident that you are under control, that you're becoming so dependent on them that they then decide they'll go off and have some fun when you're not around. You sense this as well. You sense there's a change in the dynamic because I know they say narcissists are really good at picking things up. Empaths are far better at picking things up because we have grey areas and we also understand that we understand things more than the narcissist understands things because the narcissist sees things in black and white. So we get a fuller picture of what's actually happening once we listen to our gut. So guys, the narcissist may go on to cheat 
they may go on to just devalue you a whole lot more. But finally, your gut speaks up and one of your boundaries, a boundary that you just won't go beyond, gets crossed by the narcissist and you cop on and you realise that you have a sense within yourself that this relationship is transactional and the person who's benefiting from the transaction is wholly the narcissist and you are the one that's suffering. Your gut, you finally allow your gut to speak to you. Your gut may not at this stage be, be enough to get you out of the relationship. It may help you if you've learned what narcissistic abuse is, if you've had support from friends and family, or if the narcissist leaves you and you learn about narcissistic abuse. Your gut will save you in the end. It will eventually because it is like a situation where there is a predator and prey. And your instinctual need to survive will help you escape the narcissist or be able to recover and accept that you are with a narcissist post-discard. We have this instinctiveness within us and empathic people have it more so. Empathic people have the biggest gut brain going. The problem is empathic people tend to, tend to listen to their emotional intelligence in relation to compassion um, understanding, accepting, loving somebody else, saving somebody else, having faith that the other person can change when we don't know what a narcissist is. Once an empathic person learns what a narcissist is and about narcissistic abuse and about NPD, they're really good to go in the world. So if you can overcome what you've been through and really listen to your gut in the next situation that you're in with the person, if they're trying to rush you, if they're negating your self, your, your autonomy, if they want all of your time and all of you, if your relationships with other people family and friends are breaking down, if your health is suffering, if things go, aren't going well in your job, all this happens all of a sudden, um, your financial situation, you're no longer able to pay your bills. Things like that are real indicators that you have been with a narcissist. It's no coincidence that all those things happened when you got involved romantically with a narcissistic person. They're the red flags, but listening to your gut is wholly important in future when you go into, you start to enter another relationship or you have a work colleague or a new friend and you begin to feel not so good around that person with interactions with that person and things involving that person seem to kind of fall apart. Going back to the very beginning, don't be anybody's prey. Listen to your instincts and get away from that predator. Because a predator is a predator is a predator. A narcissist is a narcissist is a narcissist. You are now good to go. You're an empathic person. You have the ability to love and be happy, which the narcissist does not. You're aware of narcissistic abuse. You can avoid it. You listen to your gut. You now have the education. You are now good to go in life. You are now ready to open up to a healthy relationship where you're forewarned about the predatory, dark souls that walk 
our earth at the moment. I hope this has helped. I hope the description of what it feels like to be in a narcissistically abusive romantic relationship will resonate. And it's funny, even with all the the DSM criteria, all the narcissistic coaching diagnostic material, it's often a feeling of what we were through with the person. Say you were with a person for two years, five years, 10 years. And it always felt anxiety making and negative. That's kind of the best diagnosis you can get in relation to was I with the narcissist or not. Guys, I best go. It's it's the video's gone on for quite a while. Uh, take care of yourselves until the next time. Just look after yourselves and remember to listen to your gut brain. Bye.